is the one with bear. Today I will show you how I use the brushes in Ultimate Brush Pack for Clip Studio Paint available on graphicsly.com. This pack contains 100 Clip Studio Paint brushes varying from penciling, inking, to watercolor and pastel look. It also comes with layered files showing you the looks and results you can achieve from these brushes. In this video, I will create my own illustrations using various brushes from the pack and walk you through how I use them. Once you have the downloaded file, right click on the file then hit extract all, which will extract all of the brushes neatly into folders. Find the ones that you want, then simply drag the SUT file into the sub tool panel. I always only import one first, drag that one to the right of the top tabs to create a new brush folder, going to the new brush folder and import the rest. You always can reorganize the brushes later on by dragging them in and out of the folders. I started with a simple sketch using the pencil brushes. The pencil brushes come in two sets, light sketching and pencil. I found this to be extremely convenient as I can start with a light shade using light sketch brush, then immediately darken the area by switching to any pencil brush without ever having to change the color on the color wheel. They work together seamlessly and for someone who doesn't use color presets and only rely on color picking, having two sets for different tonal values really speed up the sketching and shading process. The inking brushes come in various textures and thickness, as well as hatching brushes and ink stamps. They're fairly straightforward and self-explanatory, but I'll talk a little bit more on ink stamps later. The painterly folder comes with various highly textured painting brushes. For this look, I used watercolor 1, 2, and 3, as well as painterly 2 and 3. The watercolor brushes are incredibly fun. I used 3 for big area washes, 2 for the majority of the painting, and 1 for adding more obvious and textural watercolor edges. Watercolor 1 is a very interesting brush, as it adapts both foreground and background color. I like using it with closer tones to give it a more natural look, and adjust the border of watercolor in the subtool detail panel accordingly. I also love this brush for painting transparency into areas that already have color. It gives a really interesting water edge effect, as you can see in the video right now, the white edges in her clothes. These watercolor brushes mimic in real life watercolor textures really well. So remember to layer them from light to dark, just like how you would using watercolors in real life. They require a little bit of patience to build up rich colors, but it'll be worth it. This look is done with oil brushes 1, 2, and 3. They work in similar way, but with different textures. I personally love Oil One. It gives a very distinctive canvas texture, but also provides enough color, and is a lot easier to control simply by applying less or more pressure. Oil Two is a very heavily textured brush where colors come through more subtly. I find this brush to be perfect for laying down base and background. 
Oreo 3 has an interesting edge that I love dabbing around to provide a little bit of randomness and messiness to the painting. These oil brushes make very good use of color mixing attribute in Clip Studio Paint's brush engine. You can easily adjust the amount of paint and density of the brush by changing the setting under ink in the subtool detail panel. Oil brushes have high opacity, which means just like in real life acrylic and oil, it looks best to layer from dark to light. Lastly, I want to talk about Ink 12 and Ink 13. These two beautiful ink stamps can add very nice finishing touches to your piece and you can easily alter them to suit your needs. For Ink 12, open your sub to a detail panel, go under Stroke, and enable Ribbon Effect. Select the second last option. This will make the brush tip image continuous until you lift the pen or until tip image runs out. But right now, it isn't going the direction I want it to go. So go back to brush tip, go under angle, and move the angle slider until you see the preview image become horizontal. And now you can have a dry brush finish. It's super nice to add this while painting hair. You can also reverse it So it'll have a different direction. You can change the blending mode by going to ink, blending mode, and select from the drop down menu. For a more natural ink look, choose multiply. Ink 13 is perfect for painting fur or adding the messy look to your painting. Go into angle and check random. Increase it to the amount that you prefer. This will randomize the angle of the tip every time the tip is applied. I then go to stroke and increase the gap between each tip so that the edges are obvious but still connected. There you go! I go from dark to light when layering and you can get that fur effect in no time. Or Simply increase your brush size and use it as a background texture or base for your painting. That's it! I hope a few examples were helpful and if you have any questions on the brushes, find me on social media at the one with bear. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a ton of fun with these brushes.